Example one is, uh, it's fairly trivial. Um, integrals are not, um, if you haven't done integrals for a while, you're not going to recognize it, but it's, it's there and it's not as hard as, as it should be, as it could be. Um, so, I mean, Griffiths earns points for trying to give you simple problems, even though the math around it seems to be more difficult than it really is. So these are the equations we have. We're using retarded time, which is t minus uh, r over c. Remember, r is the difference between uh, r minus r hat, right? And um, so we're going we're gonna to start with uh, the assumption that we have this vertical wire that extends off into infinity. Um, it goes off in the k hat direction. And the current on that wire is equal to zero when t is less than or equal to zero. And it's equal to i naught when t is greater than zero. So the current instantly turns on, bam. Now we know that you really can't do this. There's a, there's a back EMF and all that kind of stuff. So there's, there's going to be some discontinuity at, at t equals zero along this wire, um, which, which will show up in our solution. But you know, that's not a big deal. Uh, we're going we're gonna to plug and chug and, and just get the answer here. So our V um, depends on rho. We don't have any charge density. So V is equal to zero for all time. Okay. But our A depends on the current, okay? It's, it's this simple formula here. So let's, let's go ahead and, and plug and chug on that. So we have our A vector is equal to mu naught over four pi times the integral um, from minus infinity to infinity of the retarded current. So we have R vector prime uh, T R over um, curly R D tau. Okay, now, um, if you imagine, so we're taking at some point P out here, okay? And if you imagine the bubbles that are around this point, um, this bubble occurs when you look back in time a little bit. This bubble occurs when you look back just enough to include a point on that wire. And this bubble looks back in time like that, okay? so. Um, basically, the, the point is is that it's not the current on the wire right now that matters. It's the current on the wire a certain time ago that matters. And looking at it geometrically, we see that um, so this this point is some distance. Um, we're going to call this R from. We're going to use cylindrical coordinates, so it's distance R away from that wire. Okay, and so at t less than. Um, R over C. Okay, J um, will always be zero. Okay, at T equals R over C, that's when we that's that's when we just touch the point when the current just turns on in time and space. Um, so only at that point, and at T greater than R over C, we have a length of wire where the current is turned on and all the rest of it's turned off, and the length of that wire. Um, so it basically um, goes, um, so if you look at, we take, we take this length of the wire, that, that much wire is turned on, the rest of it is turned off. And uh, using a geometrical approach to that, well, um, we have R, we have this distance here, which is uh, CT, and uh, we can calculate that the, um, the length is of wire that's turned on is two times the square root of CT squared minus R squared. Um, yes, that's correct, because you have one on the top, one on the bottom, simple Pythagorean's theorem, um, very straightforward. So we really only have to evaluate the integral um, between those two points, or rather take from zero to that point and evaluate the integral and double it. Uh, so we have two times the integral from zero to square root of CT squared minus R squared uh, times the current, which is I naught over R. It's a vector, so it goes in the k-hat direction. Okay. And I naught's constant. You can pull that out. So you get mu naught I naught over 4 pi, uh, or 2 pi, because we have the 2 and the 4. Um, and this integral turns out to be, oh, this is TZ, DZ. Um, this, uh, our r is just uh, square root of r squared minus z squared. And so you do this integral and you get uh, the logarithm of uh, the square root of r squared minus plus 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 z squared um, plus 
z, and that's the value between 0 and the square root of ct squared minus r squared. Okay, and you plug that in, and you get mu naught i naught over 2 pi uh, log of ct plus square root of ct squared plus z r squared over r in the k hat direction. I forgot the k hat up here. Okay, so this is your a field. Okay, and this this a field, um, you see tr is gone. We just have t, you know. So now we can calculate any point in time and space what the a field is going to be, um, and it's going to be zero. T is less than r over c, less than or equal to when t is greater than r over c. Okay, there we go. Um, so using this, you plug. You plug this into the potential formulations, which I'm going to pull up here for you. Um, the E field is minus the gradient of the potential, the electrical potential minus the A field, and the B field is the curl of the A. So let's do that really quickly. That shouldn't take too long. So, um, let me turn my page in my notes here. Okay, so the E at R vector comma T. Uh, the V is the V potential is zero, but we have minus the time derivative of the A field, which uh, where is our solution? There it is. Um, so take the time derivative of this garbage, and you end up with um, the answer minus u naught over two pi i naught c over the square root of ct squared minus r squared. ct squared minus r squared, ct plus r squared. Um, let me verify what the book says, make sure I don't confuse you, because I think I might have, um, right now I'm panicking. ct squared minus r squared. ct squared minus r squared, minus, and it's, uh, r squared plus z squared, ct squared minus r squared. Okay, I'm good. Okay, so minus there. Um, and then remember, that's only for uh, t is greater than r over c. Um, it's going to be 0 when t is equal to r over, uh, less than r over c, and it's it's uh, undefined at t is equal to r over c. And you can kind of see why it would be undefined when, when t is equal to r over c. Uh, you're dividing by 0, and you can't do that. So there's a discontinuity in that guy. Um, so our B field is just the curl of the A. And you work the curl out with that A equation I gave you earlier. And the only term that's important is the DAZ by DR in the phi hat direction. And so that just ends up being mu naught I naught over 2 pi R times CT over the square root of ct squared minus r squared, okay? And again, that's when t is greater than r over c. It would be 0 when t is less than r over c. Uh, 0 when t is less than r over c. And if you, once again, it's going to be undefined at t is equal to r over c, okay? So uh, basically what's happening is um, our wire, let me draw Let's draw the wire here and let's talk about what's really going on, just so you can kind of get a, a feel for it. So our wire goes up like that, okay? So at some point out here, um, the E and the B fields are zero until a certain amount of time passes, okay? And that current has a time to get its messaging up to there. Uh, through what mechanism? We're not talking about that right now, which just takes some time. So the B field starts off very large, pointing in the phi hat direction. Um, so what's phi hat? That is a, um, is that away? No, R is away from. Phi hat is, oh gosh, why do I feel so stupid all of a sudden? Um, okay, Z is up, phi is around, okay. So phi is like into the page. Uh, is it negative or positive? What does the book say? It is positive. Okay, so we have this field that's building up. It starts off really large, and then it, it diminishes until it, it settles on this value here um, when you know t approaches infinity. So it settles on the, the classic Biot-Savart um, magnetic field. The E field, on the other hand, starts off 
uh, pointing down, very large, and then over time it diminishes and diminishes until it goes to zero. Okay, so um, the minute that message hits that point, you get this massive B and E field that diminishes and diminishes until the B field remains and the E field's gone. So pretty cool, huh? Um, it's also interesting to note that the B field and the E field are are um, perpendicular to each other. And remember, the original thesis is is how are we going to get electromagnetic uh, waves? Uh, given certain charge or current configurations. Well, here's an example. This one will give you, um, you can see just turning the current on gives you this, this burst of a wave. But if you turn the current on and off and on and off, you can probably generate an actual wave. Um, next, we're going to cover dipoles, um, uh, electric and uh, magnetic dipoles. Um, then we'll cover accelerating charge. And um, you, the thing that, the, the takeaway from all of this section, 9-1, is is, is really these three equations um, with the really interesting one being this guy at the top. It's the concept of retarded time. Um, can you see that? Yes, you can. So just keep in mind retarded time, what it means, how it works. Um, if, if you're having a hard time imagining this, um, you know, imagine that instead of you know, talking about distances in centimeters or, or in meters even, think about what happens when you're looking at stars in the sky, you know, where it takes light years for a message to travel that distance. You know, if somebody suddenly turned on a current on a distant star, how long would you have to wait before you would see the resulting, you know, E or B field from that current? So, anyway, uh, if you have questions or comments, be sure to ask. Uh, video responses are totally welcome. And uh, thanks for your time. Take care. Bye.